Hey everybody, this is Dave Dugdale, learningdslrvideo.com. When I was in Maui, I got to meet up with Michael Andrew. He does a lot of photography courses on Canon, as well, I think, Nikon cameras as well. And he does it mostly on the photography side. And since I'm doing courses on the video side with similar cameras, it would be kind of cool to meet up with him for lunch. So got to talk about a lot of different things, which is fun. And after lunch, um, the restaurant wasn't too busy. Um, I asked the owner if it was okay if I taped there. And so I asked Andrew a few questions. Um, the first question I asked him was just kind of some tips, because um, I was going around the island in different locations, um, some tips on the island, and here's what he said. Um, I think as an educator, my role is to really try to help solve problems for people who are shooting uh, different kinds of you know techniques for the first time. If, if they're a pure beginner, I can help them. If they're more advanced or experts, for example, you're gonna go to Big Beach and you wanna shoot waves. Well, the first thing I'm gonna tell you is don't get killed out there because people drown at Big Beach and there's certain things to look for in, in terms of how to stay safe. The second thing I can tell you is you're gonna get water and sand beating on your port and there are some uh, different kinds of coatings you can put on your port to prevent that from happening. Uh, another big thing is water clarity. Another big thing is what time of day you're shooting because the sun is gonna be at a certain angle at a certain position and these are all things that you wouldn't know unless you were out there shooting. Or if you were to go up to Haleakala and do some night shots, there's a certain time you wanna get up there because of conditions and other people that might compete for a spot. And so as an educator, most of my pleasure comes from solving problems for other shooters. And when I know these other techniques, I'm able to give advice better. That's kind of what I'm going for. I don't shoot quite as much as I, as I used to, but I still try to shoot at least once a week. When I went to Big Beach, I tried to capture waves. Since I don't have a housing or didn't rent a housing from my 5D Mark III, uh, underwater housing, um, I just used the GoPro and I just put it on the 4K highest resolution video mode I could do. It has a pretty fast um, shutter speed already built into it, so capturing the wave in terms of no motion blur wasn't a problem. Um, but I, I was just wasn't there at the right time of day and here's the wave I the best wave I caught. I was just trying to put it into the wave. I wanted to get a nice curl um, with the light going through it, but I wasn't there at the right time of the day. Um, really, I think you have to be there at sunset or sunrise to get the light going through the wave. Um, but anyway, I gave it a try. The next question I asked him was, um, what's some really good gear for beginners to buy? For beginners, typically what they do is they buy the camera with a kit lens and they rely on the kit lens. And so the first piece of equipment I would recommend is getting a wider aperture, low light lens, something like the 50 millimeter 1.8. You're gonna have a lot more uh, you know, types of conditions you can shoot in when you can open your aperture up. I can't tell you how many times beginners will, you know, they'll write and they'll ask, you know, my apertures or my speed, shutter speed's flashing, I'm having a problem, it's because of the lens. The kit lens doesn't open wide enough, so it's probably the first investment they should look at is a 50 millimeter 1.8, it's 100 bucks. Good tripod, you know, not these cheapy ones at Walmart for 60 bucks, a nice, sturdy, strong tripod. You can do long exposures. That's a very good investment. Next question I asked him is, what are three places that you love to shoot at? I love to shoot in water, all kinds of water photography. I, I'm doing a lot of scuba diving. So night diving, I love it. Wish you would, if you were a night diver, I'd take you night diving. It's, oh man, it's crazy. Uh, I like shooting at beaches. Um, I love shooting up at Haleakala amazing just because of the location and i also like shooting on uh, certain trails there's waterfalls here I, I haven't been able to get out as much but those three so water water and beaches trails Haleakala. and the last question i asked him is you know people like uh, that may be following my blog that um, are getting good at video but they want to get better at photography um, what are some tips for those type of people for videographers who have DSLRs who are looking to get into photography, I would say the most important thing they can do is to get some good training on it, simply because it's a huge investment. They've probably spent at least $1,000, in some cases $2,000. Get the training to overcome that learning curve. There's a steep learning curve of learning the photography basics, the composition, there's a lot of nuances and little tricks that would be just easier to learn if somebody said, hey, look at this and that, instead of 
having them do it on their own. That's the first thing I would say. The second thing I would say is to try to shoot every day for a year. And uh, 365 projects are very popular. It's where you essentially take a picture of yourself every day for a year. And I've sponsored a couple of them on my websites and the growth that I see from a, a pure beginner to the time they finish is just almost impossible to believe. We have people who don't know how to turn their cameras on running businesses at the end of the year, expert photographers. And so if somebody wants to learn more about photography, those two things would be the most important thing is get some training. I have training videos obviously on tons of cameras and take pictures every day for a year. Try to do some kind of project where you're regularly taking pictures. The best advice I can give somebody. So it was nice to meet up with Michael for lunch. Um, if you get a chance, definitely check out his last video. He compared the Nikon D600 to the Canon 6D. Um, it's mostly on the photography side, but it's really well done. Um, one of the things he does a lot with uh, is the speed of the focus. Um, and he does a lot of like low contrast, high contrast, low lighting type situations, speed, a bunch of other stuff that I don't really get into in my videos because I don't really deal with autofocus that much. So if you're on the photography side, definitely check out his comparison video. That's pretty much it. Um, and I'm still, I'm getting very close to finishing my course on the Canon uh, T3i uh, for video. So stay tuned for that. All right, talk to you guys later. Bye.